Then comes the bowman's layer, the stroma, the distension membrane, and the endothelium. Now coming to the function of the cornea. The cornea's main function is to detect or bend light that helps the eyes to see. The cornea is responsible for focusing most of the light that enters the eye. The first layer, that is the epithelium, is a layer of cells covering the cornea. This function is that it absorbs nutrients and oxygen from tears and conveys it to the rest of the cornea. It contains three nerve endings. It also prevents foreign matter from entering the eye. And it, the cornea acts as inferior receptive surface of the eye and thus contributes to optical power of the eye. So basically, that means that the uh, ability that we are able to see is basically the cause of the cornea that is present in our eye. And it also serves as a structure barrier to protect the inner internal contents of the eye. Now, how does light focus to produce vision? All the different parts of our eyes work together to help us see. First, the light passes through the cornea, the clear front layer of the eye. The cornea is shaped like a dome, as you can see in the diagram. This is a dome shape and bends light to help the eye focus. Some of this light enters the eye through an opening called the pupil. As you can see in the diagram, this is the pupil. The iris controls how much light is going to pass to the people like, uh, in the, into the eye. Next, the light passes through the lens, the clear inner part of the eye. The lens works together with the cornea to focus light correctly on the retina. The light hits the retina, a light system layer of the tissue at the back of the eye, special cells called photoreceptors, turn the light into electrical signal. The electrical signals travel from the retina to the optic nerve to the brain, when the brain turns the signals into the images we see. So basically, the light will enter through the cornea and the pupil will allow that how much light is going to pass through it. Then the lens uh, will create a signal to photoreceptors and these signals will be uh, conveyed uh, to the brain, to the optic nerve, and the, then uh, the brain will be able to process the image that is being seen through the eye. That is how eyes work. Now, this next topic is laser ablation. Laser ablation has uh, two parts. It has chemistry and it has its physics. Basically, first we are going to discuss its chemistry. The chemistry, as you can see in the diagram, uh, is to measure the particles of the laser. Laser ablation for chemical analysis offers elemental, also topic and classification analysis, minimal or no sample separation, rapid turn around time, no consumables, and chemical interrogation from any sample. As you can see in the diagram, first the uh, laser uh, is uh, induced uh, uh, through breakdown spectroscopy and laser ablation molecular isotopic spectroscopy and by transporting the ablated mass to an inductively coupled plasma with either mass spectroscopy or atomic emission spectroscopy. And that is how the particles are measured. The rest is uh, all the process you can see in the diagram that has been explained very thoroughly. Now coming to the next part, that is the laser ablation physics. Laser ablation physics is a process by which uh, you can see that how much time a laser takes to uh, do its work, like for example, reshaping the cornea, as that is our main topic. Laser ablation is basically the process of focusing the first laser beam with sufficient energy onto a sample to remove a small amount of mass. Ablation physics are the explosive underlying mechanism for dissipating the laser energy that was absorbed, and the mass is removed by a tiny explosion. As you can see in the figure, the laser irradiance is up to 10 is per 12 to 10 is per 17 watt per centimeter square. And that is uh, an example of physical mechanisms that have been hyperdesired studies to represent the ablation process over 15 orders in time. The next topic is the use of UV rays. So the question arises, why UV rays? Why only UV rays are used in the process of laser ablation? 
for example, the uh, in the process for the using the uh, uh, cornea for shaping it. So, examined lasers created in the 1980s allow ophthalmologists to precisely remove. Precisely means to accurately remove very small amounts of cornea. During lasers, the examined laser produces UV light that is absorbed by tissue as opposed to burning or cutting through. It translates to laser removing very thin surface layers of tissue while leaving the remainder of the tissue unharmed and which are discomfort to the patient. So UV rays are very precise in their work. They have high precision and they can easily focus on a narrow beam. They have shorter wavelengths, so they will not harm the surrounding area and will only work on the exposed part and the part they are supposed to work on. That's the main reason UV rays are used in laser ablation process. Okay, so our main topic is going to start now. That is the laser surgery procedure. First, it has five steps. Topical anesthesia. Place a suction ring and eyelid in the speculum of your eye. That is basically exposing it to the laser, examined laser that are UV rays in our case. Then a corneal flap is created. The focus on the laser aimed towards your eye, the specific part of the eye that is going to be reshaped, the cornea basically. And then the flap is repositioned in case for eyes to heal. In the first process, drops are put into the, the eye, that is tropical anesthesia drops. These drops are used to numb the eye during laser surgery so the patients are awake and comfortable but they won't feel any pain. Then a suction ring is placed. These stainless devices keep your eyes in proper spot and stop you from blinking. You may feel some pressure on your eyelid like someone is pressing on it, but there won't be any harmful pain. And the process will go on smoothly. Then a corneal flap is created. Your surgeon lifts and pulls the flap back like turning a page of the book. Then comes the main part that is focusing the examen laser, the UV rays, onto the cornea. You may hear a clicking sound when that is done, and there would might be an unusual smell. This isn't the laser burning your eyes, this is basically the laser shaping your cornea. The, during the laser treatment, what is noticeable that your eye position is measured 500 times a second. The laser will stop if you move too much, so please avoid moving while the surgery is being performed. Then the corneal flap is put back into the, its place and it begins retaking the eyes away and continues to heal after you go home. This is, as you can see in the diagram, first uh, the corneal flap will be created after putting the anesthesia drop in the eyes. Then the corneal flap will be lifted and folded back for uh, exposing the cornea where the light is going to be focused. Then the examined lasers that are UV rays are focused on the cornea, cornea exposed part, and uh, the cornea is reshaped, and the flap is folded back into place. And that's how your eyes are get, getting treated through laser surgery, and the corneal flap will. Uh, basically automatically heal that and it will get back to the exposition and you will be able to see very clearly and very thoroughly without any glasses or any lenses through your own eyes so that she has been successfully. So, after you go home, there might be some safety procedures that you will have to observe and perform. After the position, uh, procedure is finished, your vision will be relatively clear, as I already said, if the surgery was successful, it will do wonders. People describe as being similar to looking for a dirty window when your eyes are still in the healing position, but there won't be any need for any glasses or contact lenses after the procedure. Uh, the uh, safety outcomes that you will have to observe might be that you will have to get a driver to drive you home because you won't be able to see successfully, so it can be dangerous. A shield to protect your eyes, to stop uh, touching for your eyes, and you won't have any stitches in your eyes, so it's essential to avoid bumping or touching your eyes, which can disrupt the healing of the corneal strap. 
lubricating eye drops to manage eye eye symptoms uh, your doctor will provide your surgeon will provide you with eye drops uh, that will be specific for your eyes and you will have to use them in case you don't get any dry eyes after the surgery antibiotics to prevent infections and steroidal eye drops to prevent inflammation most people have 90% of their breast vision that is a very very huge scale most are able to die in case free after the post operative visit which is typically the next day so the your surgeon will have to check your eyes again after the procedure the very next day in case you have any problem with your eyes then uh, as every positive and good side has the other negative and bad side there might be side effects that will be coming along with the laser surgery what these side effects can be these side effects can be that after the surgery there might be discomfort or my pain in your eyes you might get dry eyes watery eyes puffy eyelids or sensitivity to light that uh, if you are exposed to uh, a very bright uh, space you might not be able to see well and your eyes might hurt Dry eye is the most common side effect. It affects about 30% of the people who have laser. The discomfort is most worrisome about three months after the surgery, but it usually goes away after six to 12 months. That is a relief of pain. Other side effects can be starburst or glare around your eyes, which can be most disruptive when driving at night. Reduce night vision, blurred vision, tiny red or pink spots, and sensitivity to light. Most of these effects occur within the first three months, but six months after the surgery, the side side effects will mostly be gone. But if we come to the positive side, there are many many positive benefits as our eyes are ninety percent healed by the process of laser surgery. So the positive side that is a uh, outcoming the negative side as eyes are healed ninety percent of very large scale. I am repeating that again. Yes, everything involves as it is a medical procedure. There can be a lot of risk coming along with it. What these risks can be? A very first risk can be the dry eyes. Laser surgery causes a temporary decrease in tear production. For the first six months or so after your surgery, your eyes will be unusually dry as they heal. In case uh, you are not using your uh, eye drops that was provided by your surgeon, if you experience severe dry eyes, you could offer an other procedure to get special plugs put in the tear duct to prevent your eyes uh, tears from draining away from the surface of your eyes. The second risk can be glare, hollows, and double vision. You may have double difficulty seeing at night after surgery, which usually lasts. A few days to few weeks, you might notice increased light sensitivity, glare, halos around bright lights. Halos are basically hallucinations. It comes from hallucinations that are images that uh, are not real, but they are created by your eyes when you see a uh, 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 you know focus focus position, and you might see that image again and again at different places, but that image is not actually real. It is just your eyes creating halos. Even when a good vision result is measured under standard testing conditions, your vision region is dim light, such as dark at dusk or in fog, may be reduced to a greater degree after the surgery than before the surgery. The next risk can be under correction. If in case the laser removes too little tissue from your eye and uh, the eyes are not completely healed, that means the cornea is not uh, treated. Completely, and only a little part of the cornea is repositioned. That can lead to under conditions, uh, corrections, and it can lead to nearsightedness. Overcorrection. Overcorrection is that the too much tissue tissue was removed from your cornea. Your, while reshaping your cornea, the surgeon uh, was unable to uh, uh, test the process uh, accurately, and the uh, tissue was removed. More than it was supposed to. Another condition can be astigmatism. Astigmatism can be caused by uneven tissue removal. It may require require additional surgery, glasses, or contact lenses. Flat problem. 
Folding back or removing the flap from front of your eye during the surgery can cause complications including infection and exosphere. The outermost corner tissue layer may grow abnormally underneath the flap during the healing process. The next condition can be regression. Regression is when your vision slowly changes back towards your original prescription. This is a less common complication. Vision loss or changes. Rarely, surgical complications can result in loss of vision. Some people also may not see as sharply or clearly as previously. So, as every patient gets an effective result after the surgery, some of them might not get an effective result and they may get the loss of vision or they might not be able to see sharply after the surgical procedure has been done. Uh, now coming uh, to the summary of our uh, topic, what can be better than LASIK or any type of a laser surgery in case your laser surgery is not successful? Each type of respective laser eye surgery has its own benefits and drawbacks. As I explained, laser has a lot of this too. So what uh, uh, alternative one can opt for in case laser surgery doesn't go as well as it was supposed to. One type isn't universally best for everyone. The best type of surgery depends on many factors, including the thickness of your cornea, the health of your eyes, your job, or your lifestyle. Several types of laser surgeries can't cre uh, create corneal fiber good back. It should be the position of the surgery as laser does. So these surgeries might be better for you if you're not a candidate for laser or if your laser surgery doesn't go well. These alternatives can be photoreceptive, corrective coming, small incision, lenticule extraction, smile, implantable columnar lens. Talk to an eye care provider about these options and what option is best for you. The last uh, discussion is that what uh, laser surgery gets better in the surgery? Yes, as uh, we know that we are living in a very technological world, the world is improving day by day, we're getting new technology. So yes, laser access technology is constantly endorsing and improving. The future surgical even correction is bright with new respective correction techniques and technologies on the horizon. Is laser surgery improving? Yes. Laser surgery vision is always improving with new techniques and technologies being developed to provide an even better level of correction and outcomes for patients. So, laser surgery is improving, and even though there are risks involved, the complications involved, but still, it is a very great procedure in case you want your eyes healed. Uh, that was all from my side. Here are some references that I provided uh, from where I got all the material. Uh, about the laser surgery and the procedure, the laser ablation, and you can visit any link uh, from here to get more information on the topic and to deeply and thoroughly learn it. Thank you so much. This was also my side. Uh, thank you so much for giving your time and thank you so much for listening to me. Allah Hafiz.